This content is a tutorial on how to play on ukulele the song Green Green Grass of Home by Tom Jones. In this content, you will learn the chords and the appropriate strumming pattern. The song is written in key of G sharp and there are seven chords. The chords are G sharp, G sharp 7, C sharp, D sharp, D sharp 7, C minor, and A sharp minor. And all these chords are difficult chords, especially for beginners. But by lowering the pitch of each of these chords by a half step, we get to a set of simple chords. And these are G, G7, C, D, D7, B minor, and A minor. These are all simple and easy chords except for B minor which you will only play once near the end of the song. Since this set of easy and simple chords are lower than the actual chords by a half step, playing these chords for the song would sound lower than the record. But we can still use these simple easy chords and to be able to play along with the song at the record pitch or key. All we have to do is to use and place a capo at first fret. But if you don't have a capo, I would still suggest that you use these easy chords to play the song. It will not match the record pitch, but it will still sound the same song. Now I will discuss to you the fingerings of each of these easy and simple chords with the capo at first fret. Before I discuss with you the fingerings for each of those chords with the capo at first fret, let me discuss with you a bit about the fretboard. The strings are numbered. This is number 1, number 2, number 3, and number 4. And this place here is the first fret, second fret, third fret, and fourth fret, and so on. And for the left hand fingers, this is your, our index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. Now for the first chord, with the capo at first fret, we'll be using this chord, which is actually the shape of G, but this is actually the sound of G sharp. To simplify things, let me just mention the name of this simple chord. So we have G and for G you have your index finger on the third string at second fret. Now this becomes the second fret because the capo takes the position of the first fret. So this time we will count the numbering of the frets in relation from the capo. So this now would be the first fret, second fret, 3rd fret, 4th fret, and so on. So for this first simple easy chord G, or G major, you have your index finger on the 3rd string at 2nd fret, middle finger on the 1st string at 2nd fret, and your ring finger on the 2nd string at 3rd fret. The top string is left open. So this would be the G for this song with the capo at first fret. The shape is G if you're familiar to G major chord, but actually the sound is G sharp because we have the capo at first fret. The actual G is without a capo of course is this one. As you can hear it sounds lower. But to use simple chords and still be able to play at the recorded pitch of the song we will be needing the capo at first fret. Now this is the G for this song with the capo at first fret. For the next chord which is C, this one. You have your ring finger on the first string at third fret. All the rest of the strings are left open. And for D7, the, your index finger would be on the 4th string at 2nd fret, your middle finger on the 2nd string at 2nd fret. The other strings are left open. 
and for G7 you have your index finger on the second string at first fret your middle finger on the third string at second fret your ring finger on the first string at second fret the top string is left open then for D major chord you have your index finger on the fourth string middle finger on the third string and ring finger on the second string all fingers three fingers all at second fret the first string is left open the next chord near the end of the song is a bar chord you have your index finger laid across all four strings at second fret and your ring finger on the fourth string at fourth fret this one and lastly for A minor you have your middle finger on the fourth string at second fret the other three strings are left open so these are the fingerings for seven chords with capo at first fret now let's discuss the transition between chords there is a from G we move to C so this is G and to the next chord which is C all you have to do is just take out the index finger and the ring finger and then move your middle finger to third fret now this is C and back to G all you have to do is move back the middle finger to second fret and then position your middle your index finger and your ring finger back to these strings and then there's a transition between or from G to D7 this is G all you have to do is keep this formation of the index and middle finger just place them at the same time one string up so your index finger goes on the fourth string and your middle finger on the second string now this is d7 of course back to g all you have to do is bring these two fingers one string down and then add your ring finger on the second string a third fret now this is g there is a transition from g to g7 for this chord, you'll have to break the shape and form G7. And from G to C, all you have to do is take out your index and middle finger and move your third finger to the next fret. Now this is C. And from G to D, this is G, you really have to break the shape to form uh, shape for D and from D to D7 all you have to do is take out the middle finger now this is D7 and there's a transition from C to B minor all you have to do is since your index finger is free laid on all four strings at second fret and your ring finger goes to the fourth string at fourth fret now that's B minor and at the end of the song from B minor you move to A minor which you can play with this finger but if you notice since you are playing B minor prior to that chord you already have your ring finger on the fourth string so all you have to do is take out the index finger and move the ring finger from fourth string from fourth fret to second fret for a minor so this sequence from b minor to a minor can be done this way and then the last chord is g
And for the strumming pattern, I suggest this rhythmic pattern. As you can see, there is a downstroke at count one. The next stroke is an upstroke at count two. The third stroke is a downstroke at between two and three. The fourth stroke is an upstroke between counts three and four. The fourth stroke is a downstroke right at count four. And the last stroke is an upstroke between four and one or the next measure. So the suggested rhythmic pattern is a sequence of six strokes. It's a combination of down and up strokes and also in relation to duration of those strokes it's a combination of quarter note and eighth note strum the stroke at count one is actually a quarter note strum the stroke at count two that's an eighth note the stroke or the down stroke between counts two and three is a quarter note strum and the upstroke between counts three and four is an eight note. And the downstroke at count four is another eight note. And the stroke between four and the next one is also an eight note. So the suggested rhythmic pattern is a series of downstroke and upstrokes. Down, up, down, up, down, up. But in terms of duration, it's a series of Quarter note, eighth note, quarter note, eighth note, eighth note, and eighth note. For this suggested rhythmic pattern, the counting is actually an eighth note counting. So you have to count one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and practice eighth note counting first. Do it for several bars or measures or do a number of repetitions. Make sure that your counting is steady and even. And when you can count steady and even, then try to apply the sequence of strokes as shown here. The strumming pattern is good for one measure if you noticed. So all you have to do is do an 8 note counting for each bar or measure. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and we have a downstroke at count 1 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and so that's how it sound like at that slower tempo to be able to apply the rhythm smoothly you learn it first at a slower tempo and get comfortable doing it then you can do the pattern over and over without making a mistake or without messing up the sequence of strokes. That's when you can speed up the counting. As a demonstration on applying the strokes for the pattern, it, let's apply a slower tempo. One and two and three and four and. So with the pattern, one and two and three and four and 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 and when you get comfortable doing that for several measures then try to uh, do the pattern at a faster tempo like one and two and three and four and which i believe that is the tempo of the song one and two and three and four and 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 for the performance video or my demonstration of playing the song click this card I hope you find this tutorial helpful in learning to play the song on your instrument, which is ukulele. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this content and please subscribe. And don't forget to like this content 
and also share this so that others would be able to benefit from this lesson. Thank you so much. Subscribe to be notified automatically for new uploads. Thank you for watching.